So knowing what the ideal gas law is and what the things stand for is only a very beginning step in using it. You know that PV equals NRT is to know the formula, but that's actually only a launching off point. There are a variety of many, many, many different kinds of questions that we can answer using the ideal gas law. We can actually, uh, I have a list of them here that you could be solving for. Uh, eight different things that you could be asked to find using the ideal gas law. And there may even be more that I haven't thought of, but these are the ones that spring to mind. So, if you were asked to find pressure or mass or molar mass or temperature or any of these things, how would you do that? Well, you're going to do it by rearranging the ideal gas law and coming up with a new formula, uh, a new way to write the ideal gas law formula that gives you the answer that you're looking for. So this purpose of this lesson is to show you how to rearrange the ideal gas law formula to get the things that you want out of it. Now, if all you want is a list of formulas, that's that will be what this video ends up with. One of the last frames of this video will be these uh, this list of things with all of the formulas next to them. But on the test, I expect that you'll be able to rearrange them yourself, do the algebra to get the correct formula out. And so you'll probably, unless you know your algebra really well, you're going to have to be able to do some substitutions and things. This shows you how you get all these things. And so we'll derive each of these. So we'll start with the pressure one. We're going to begin with the pressure. Uh, and so how are we going to do that? If the problem asks you to find the pressure of a gas, how do you do that? Well, you always do it the same way. You always start with PV equals NRT. But uh, if you want to know what the pressure is, that means you want to get P by itself on one side. So the reason it's not by itself is you got this V in the way. So if we cancel out the V, oh look, we're already done, P equals NRT over V. So I'll go back on that last page and we'll, hmm, that's odd. So we'll go back on that last page and we'll write that down. PV equals NRT uh, turns into, for pressure, for solving for pressure, P equals NRT over V. Now how to actually solve that problem, we'll do a different uh, lesson on how to plug these things in and solve them. But that's the basic formula you're going to be using if it asks for pressure using an ideal gas law formula. If you want volume, then then we're just going to start with PV equals NRT, just like before. But this time it's not the P that we want by itself, it is the V, because we're solving for volume. So we're going to divide both sides by P, and we're left with V equals NRT over P. This is rather comically simple, isn't it? So we go back here and we're going to write uh, V equals NRT over P. Again, if these are, uh, if you uh, want to fast forward these because they're so simple, you can. Uh, I would probably uh, watch the ones on mass, molar mass, and density. Those become a little bit uh, more exciting as we get to those. So if we come back here, now we want to do the next one, I believe, was uh, moles. Whoa. I need to use, I'm going to use green. PV equals NRT. If we want to uh, know how many moles we got, we got to get N by itself. So let's divide out the RT. Divide out the RT. So now we have N equals PV divided by RT. So that's our next formula. N equals PV over RT. I'll write that right here next to moles. And R, um, I'll just go ahead and do that one. R doesn't come up. We, we actually do a lab where we try to measure R, so we're going to need it for that. Uh, for the R, R equals PV over NT. Uh, temperature is another one. You could probably do that one on your own. Well, we'll just do it on this page. PV equals NRT. So we want to divide both sides by NR to get the T by itself. And we're left with T equals PV divided by NR. And 
and now we get to some interesting ones mass molar mass and density mass molar mass and density we probably should work those out the long way so mass molar mass and density well if you notice mass molar mass and density do not show up in the ideal gas law formula except that they do they are just hidden they're hidden in the fact that we know that n is equal to g over w so that means that anywhere where we see n we can plug in g over w instead so we can take g over w here and we can plug it in where we used to have n and so that becomes grt over w so uh, if we want to find the mass that uh, I believe what we were doing next right the mass formula the mass we're doing that so we want to get the mass the g by itself how do you get g by itself well let's start by dividing out the rt but we've got to do that to both sides and then I want to I have this w that's in the way so I got to multiply it out to get rid of it over there which means I got to multiply it over here and boom I've got g equals wpv over rt so g equals wpv over rt now remember that w is the molar mass it's the number uh the molar mass uh from the table so uh as we just said molar mass is w so now we need to rearrange that guy to get w by itself so what would that look like well let's go back to where we uh started pv equals nrt but n equals g over w so we can write pv equals grt over w and uh so we can multiply both so get w out of the denominator so now we have wpv equals grt now i'm going to divide both sides by pv and those go away and i'm left with w equals grt over pv Woo! fun out al fun with algebra algebra fun so uh for molar mass w is equal to grt over pv and uh, that's a p the very last one here is density most people have trouble with this one whenever I ask them to derive it. Um, not sure why it seems like fun to me. Oh, come on. Go away. It's not oriented properly, is it? There we go. So here is uh, the formula PV equals GRT over W. But we have to find density. Now, density is not in there anywhere. We don't see a D anywhere. But remember the definition of density. Density is mass divided by volume. And if we look up here, there is a mass here and there is a volume here. So we should be able to rearrange this thing to get the mass divided by the volume on one side. And then whatever is on the other side is how you would calculate the density. So how do we do that? Well, let's go ahead and try to get the G... Uh, over, let's start by getting the G by itself on one side. Well, we've already done that a little bit ago. We uh, calculated that G equals WPV over RT. Uh, and so if we want to get G over V on one side, we can just divide out the Vs now. And so I have G density equals mass over volume equals WP over RT. So you don't have to plug in mass or volume or density. You just plug in the molar mass, the pressure, R, and the temperature, and that should get it. Now this is one of my favorite formulas because I like to visualize it this way. Density of a gas WP over RT. Whip over art. And there you go. I'll just leave it there for a while because it makes me happy. I wasn't sure what piece of art to use. I figured I'd choose the most uh, instantly accessible to most people piece of art, Mona Lisa. So let's go back here and let's finish here, finish strong. What did I just say the density formula was? 
whip over art. Now as I write this out, I'll just kind of point out, this is a lot to memorize. Uh, I think it would be ridiculous to memorize all this, which you could, but it'd be a lot easier to just uh, learn how to do your basic algebra manipulations and substitutions like we just did. Uh, some of the the mass, molar mass, density, you might you might need to memorize those, I don't know. It's a little bit more complicated, but most of these others involve simple manipulations and you shouldn't have any trouble uh, getting those. <coughs> so that is how you would get all of those different kinds of things out of the ideal gas law formula. And so there should be another lesson up uh, at some point to show you how to actually use one of these to solve for one of those things.